You may start. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jody Minnis, and I am a visual artist, curator, and writer, and I will be your instructor today. Today, we will be focusing on painting from observation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the things that we've learned uh, Monday and Wednesday and apply them to this. Ooh. Apply them to this uh, <laughs> painting. The generator just cut on everyone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so just give us one second, okay? Hi everyone, so the electricity just went off here and we are switching to generator power and resetting our internet. We will be back in a moment. Can we do a mic test, please, Jody? Mic test is mic test. One, two, one, two. Yeah, okay. What do you think, Addison? Huh? You can't tell what it is, but you can hear like the whooshing in the background. Right. Is she muted? Yeah. Hey, um, Jody. Oh no. Say something again, Jody. Jody, can you speak for me, please? Talk, saying hello, 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 hello. You good at me? Yeah, I, we're good. I think we're gonna come back and get and restart now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. All right. So we had, let me know when I can stop. I'm good. All right. We had a bit of technical difficulties just now. So what I did was I just went ahead and I blocked out my shape. I'm using the same coconut from Monday and Wednesday's class. So the same things apply. We're marking it out. General to specific. We're putting in our background. We are making sure that our angles are straight. We are being mindful of our proportions. We're getting all of this information in before we start painting because what's going to happen is we need a foundation for paint. So it doesn't make sense to just go in and just try to like map everything out with the paint. 
because if you do that, it's just going to take, you're going to use more paint. It's going to be more time consumed. And what we want to do is we just want to make sure that we have something to work with. I would not recommend using um, anything other than an HP pencil for this process because it's a lighter pencil. And sometimes depending on the colors that you use, the graphite can come through the acrylic paint. So just try to be very light with your strokes. As we all know, I'm heavy handed. So <laughs> um, that don't, you know, watch how heavy I'm going, but try to keep very light. Like try to map it out just as simply as possible just to give yourself a guide for your painting so i'm just going to get a little bit more information in this is the time where you do all of your your scale adjustments all of your proportion and size adjustments because once you get paint on it it's going to be really really hard to correct from here so we're just going to go in add a little stem there all right so what i like to do first is i i like to work background mid-ground and foreground so we're building up our services sort of kind of like what we did um with the charcoal drawing so i already have a clear delineation of what is um in the background we have this open air space in the back here and then you have the table i already pre-mixed my colors for them and what I did in deciding what colors to use was I just looked at what's in front of me and I tried to simplify it down to just two basic colors because all of the information, all of the value, all of the sort of interweaving of colors is going to happen in our subject matter in the front, which is that coconut. So I'm just going to go right in our colors and map this out, okay? So you can use a pretty um, a wide brush for this, just so you could cover as much surface area as possible. I'm a pretty wild painter, so I use different kind of brush strokes. I'm really loose. I'm not holding my brush up here like a pencil because that's just too much control, and you're gonna be there forever just trying to like get the paint on. So try to hold it at the end. Try to hold it at the end, give yourself some space. Take in some paint, make sure it's you're covering both sides. Just get that on. And this could be a quick process. It doesn't try to make sure that it's as smooth as possible. It's okay if your brush strokes show. That adds texture. You just really want to cover that. I mix some blue, some white, and some black for my background, just so I can have a tint of color to it. Most shadows and highlights are not just black and white. They all have a color to them, and we will talk about that later. So I just really want to map that in, try to get as close as possible so you don't have any white so you don't have like this like really white border around it. Some people do an underpainting. And an underpainting is just uh, painting in one color of what you're going to, of your final product. And that helps with um, proportions, that helps with light and shadow. But for this instance today, we won't be underpainting. We just want to map it out. And it's okay if you get a, if you go over the line, it's fine to just paint over that. And acrylic is really great for cleaning up your errors because it dries so quickly. So we're almost done here with the top. And I'm just trying to be cognizant of my direction of line when I come up to certain areas, just to follow those spaces. Just gonna get that in there. And that's good. On my water. So if I have more than one brush, that's okay. Uh, but I like to have a different variety of brushes just so I don't have to like keep cleaning and then cleaning and then you have like residual paint on the brush. It gets frustrating. So 
You're using a brown that I made for the bar. And the brown is just, was just made with red, blue, and yellow. And then what I did is I added some white to it just to get it close to what the, of what the paper is there. Yeah. So it's gonna mix up some more. Is that kind of drip? And if you are stickular for getting the colors to match each time around, that's okay. Sometimes you won't get a clear match, especially if you're mixing color. Sometimes it won't be the same thing each time around, and that's fine. Don't beat yourself up. All right, let's add some more white to this. I'm just mixing, and I'm just gonna go back in, map that out quickly. And like I said, it's okay. If you go over the line, we can always clean that up. And you have like this kind of muddiness here because my colors didn't mix perfectly before I put it on the canvas and that's all right. Get that in, lay that in. Almost done, guys. Stay with me. Almost there. And it's just going to take some time. It's fine. Trying to get back to that. So if you see, I have like a green thing going on. So I'm just gonna add some red to that. And it's just like this constant battle of mixing and fixing and swirling and figuring out what works. All right, almost there. If you have the color brown at your disposal, that's so fine too. You can just use the brown out of the tube, it's okay. Almost there. I just have like a little area to clean up. It's totally a different color, <laughs> but it's fine. All right. I'm gonna lean this part so I can see out that edge. I think that we have like a really good base. I'm just gonna blend some of this together so it's not just cohesive. All right, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of it. I'm gonna put that in water to, to sort of clean that out. So what I like to do is to use the same rules, general to specific. We wanna get the color that's at the base of the coconut. So you have, we have some green, we have some yellow hair, and we just wanna think about where those colors are, how they blend into one another, how light is this yellow? Is it warm? Warm meaning is does it have more reds in it? Is it cool meaning does it look like it has more blues in it? And it seems like we have like a really cool green on this side. It's a lighter like lime greeny kind of green. And then we have like a kind of warm yellow on this side and just a little hint of green on the tip here. So we're gonna make sure that we take note of that transition and try to relay that as best as possible. So my palette right now looks like a mess, but it's okay. So I'm gonna get some green with a smaller brush. And I'm looking at it now and that green is not, it's not the right green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some yellow to it to lighten it up. We got a good thing going on here. Uh, add a little bit more color. Don't be, be afraid. Don't be afraid to white it out if you feel like you've gone too far. It's totally fine. Um, painting to me is like almost trying to solve a color. 
a color, but there's one set way to do it. There's not one set way of painting. There's so many colors that are in anything that you can paint. So it's okay if you see purple in there and you want to put a purple in. That's so fine. It's okay if you see blue. It's okay if you see more red. It's, it's okay because we're not getting into hyperrealism right now. That's not, that's not the goal. So I think that I have a really good base green now. After I just mix that up. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go in and we're gonna map that out loosely. Uh, good, just take, take that right to the edge. So now we're just defining where there is. I'm just going to bring that around. We have the little coconut end there, so I'm not going to really try to get into that color. And it seems as though our color is like moving from left to right. So I'm just going to be cognizant of that with my brush stroke. So we're going to go from left to right. You could use some water. Oops. To make it move a little bit more, just tap in with a little water and it'll spread. I think this is looking really good right now. If you have any questions, let me know. It's really gonna take that down. It's gonna overlay, you're gonna pick up some color and that's fine. Really take that over. And like I said, with the drawing, painting from observation is also 90% seeing and 10% painting. So make sure that your eyes are still on your subject that's front of you. And I'm just going to pull in just a little bit more here. And we're going to go over it. And I think are good. So like I said, just remember your direction of painting as well, because that helps inform the volume as well. So we're done with that, pop that in the water. And now we're gonna go in with our yellow. So I'm just gonna grab another brush. Like I said, I love using different brushes for different colors. It's okay if you only have one brush, you can just clean off that other brush you have. So I'm just gonna get some of that yellow on my yellow is translucent which means that it doesn't have like a white base so you add a little bit more to it or else it's, it's not gonna it's not gonna thicken up so what i'm gonna do as i'm looking at my yellow it looks a bit brown looks a bit red so i'm just gonna take some of that color that we mixed earlier we're just gonna swirl that in and that's going to make it a bit more opaque as well. And then we're going to get like a really beautiful yellow brown color. I'm just going to take that and plot that in. And painting is about layering too. So it's okay if you see the whiteness of the canvas. That's fine. We're going to build some layers and that's going to go way soon. So we're just gonna put that in. We're gonna blend into that green and overlay that green that we had. Gonna mix that up a little bit more. And really just keep looking at it and seeing, oh, that's like a really nice point of intersection right there. Gonna put that color in, keeping in mind that this is our first, this is our first coat, it's our first layer. It doesn't have to look like a hyper realist drawing right now. That's not the goal. We're just trying to block in color. So blocking that in, putting those streaks in, seeing places where it overlaps. You could use some water too to help it blend a little bit more. Thin out the paint. I think that looks good. So what we're gonna do, just pull some of that yellow 
just in the back of the green. Gonna keep looking at it, keep pulling it together. We're just gonna keep layering it. Gonna go back and forth. Now the trick is not to blend so much where it gets muddy. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna leave this right here. We're gonna leave those white areas, that's fine. I think it's a good base for right now. And then let's go into our opposite ends and try to get some of that, pull some of that out. So we're gonna go in and just clean this tip up right here. And then there's like a hint of green right here. So I'm gonna get my green brush, clean that off a little bit. Just gonna pull up the green right there. Pull that in. And just clean up as you go. I like to keep all of the brushes in my hand at the same time. Line that out. There's a little bit more yellow here. And then there's like this brown in this area here. So we're gonna go back with our brown. I'm gonna use a smaller brush this time. We're gonna get a little bit of our brown. We're gonna pull that in. It's a bit darker on the coconut, but that's okay. We're gonna darken it up as we go along. And we're just looking for color shapes. So this is about shapes. We're not refining anything at the moment. Get that in. Brown on the stem. We're gonna put that there. So we're still working from general to specific. We still have a lot of refining to go, and that's fine. Painting does require patience, <laughs> more patience than drawing, if you ask me. So it's a little bit of green in here. I'm gonna plop that in. It's a little bit of brown too. I'm gonna take that in. All right. Then it gets a bit darker as it goes out, and we'll darken that up. In a minute. So what we want to do now is we're going to want to start pulling this together. So that means adding some highlights, adding some shadows, just being really cognizant of all of those things that we learned on Monday and Wednesday, how to ground our images and stuff. I just want to move this. So that's going to bother me. This hang over that a little bit. So there's a nice little shadow underneath here. I don't really like to go into brown, not brown, black right away, but just for the purpose of today, we're gonna do that. Let's get a teens, 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 little, 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 little bit of black, mix that in with our brown, because we always wanna go back to the color that we had our base on. The shadows and the highlights don't really disrupt what's going on in our or what's going on in our in our subject. So we're just gonna put that same bit of brown, black, brown, and here, create a little shadow. And then we're just gonna blend that out. And with acrylics, you really have to push and pull it. That's fine. Really just blend that out into our base. Put that shadow there. Think about the shadow shape, all of those things still apply. All of this is in shadow. Tens back here. And you just blend it. And we're thinking about relative color and relative shadow. So all of these things will apply. If you have to clean it up, that's fine. And then what you could do to clean it up is to take that same brush that we use for our base. 
and they smooth some of these shadows out. Maybe it's not so dark there, maybe it is. Gonna clean that up. So it looks like the coconut is sitting now. So in the base as well, there's a bit of a highlight around it on this side. So we're just gonna plop that in, just gonna add some white to that. They're the same color that we use. So we have our base color. And we're just gonna add some white to that. To up. I think that looks really good. And I'm wiping some of the paint off just so I could blend it in with the base color. Kind of that up. And then I'm going to blend it again with our base color. I'm blending our base color into that highlight that we just put down just so it becomes a bit more seamless. So you can really tell where the direction of light is coming from without it looking so stark. I do not, I do not, I do not, I do not recommend just putting white and black on a any kind of painting just to say that this is light and this is dark. No, always mix the color, always mix it. Always mix the white into your base color, always mix the black into your base color. Trust me, it's gonna make a world of difference. And we're just blending that. All right, and after that's been blended to a place where it's, you know, it looks pretty good. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add that, that same application of light and shadow onto our subject matter. And then, so now we're going to be in the process of refining. So there's a nice highlight here and here. So I'm just gonna pull that in. Same thing apply, take the white to your base color, mix that in. And what I like to do is I like to water that down a little bit. So it kind of, oh, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna put that in and then we're just following the light. Okay, so just give me one second. We just have to switch out some audio stuff right quick. I'm almost done, by the way. Ready? Testing one, two, testing one, two. Back on. All right, guys. So we're just gonna put that highlight in, and I watered it down a little bit. Oh, 
So it's not a stark white. We don't really want a stark white. I'm just using, like being in mind of my uh, paint application, my brush strokes, keep all of that in mind. All of that helps inform what you're looking at, what you're drawing, what you're painting. I'm just putting that in. And there's some of it right here. To, you want your brush strokes to almost feel like you're mimicking, trying to mimic what's on with the surface of the piece that you're drawing and painting looks like. So this goes back to what we talked about surface texture. That's what we're putting in right now, that's what we're being cognizant of. This is also a bit of a highlight right here adding a bit of white to that. And then what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna like go crazy. I'll just pull all of this together. So we have a highlight, we have our shadows, we have um, some areas where we recognize that there's a bit more visual texture on it than other areas. So we're just gonna try to pull all of that in together now so that we can have a clean and succinct drawing. And like I said, this takes time. So you're gonna have to go in and push and pull and really go back into areas. So I noticed that my shadow is a bit darker here than I have on my painting. So I'm just gonna re remix that color. I just plop that in. And it's just a matter of my favorite word that I've been saying <laughs> since Monday, refining. Put that in there. That looks good. Blend that out a little bit. If there's any questions, feel free to ask. I know I'm going a bit fast today, but trust me, it's not as intimidating as it may look. That's a really nice shadow if I'm going to see some myself. So I'm just going to get that little shadow right there. Like I said, it's all about seeing, it's all about looking, it's all about investigating what you're drawing and painting. Like what else is there that I'm missing? What else is there that I could put in to make, to give the most information as possible on this one thing? whether it be an apple, whether it be a coconut, whether it be a person, like how much information or what information is necessary in order for my viewers to realize, have a fully realized idea of what it is that I'm painting or drawing. We're just refining, we're just using different colors to pull in different areas of our piece, think about which areas are darker, think about which areas are lighter, think about your surface texture and how you could really relate that. Think about color, think about what would a blue hair look like? How would blue in this inform my piece? How is the red functioning? I just really want you guys to ask questions. I want you to just really think about what you're painting. And also remember that your imagination is also present in this process. So don't be afraid to think like, ah, oh, I think that a little blue hair looks better than what the green may look like. So I'm just gonna use blue, it's fine. So I'm just gonna get some of that, that surface section, really play around with that. Think about what that is. Think about how it looks. It's really scratchy. It's, it's really, it seems like very haphazard. There's no real rhyme or rhythm to it. It looks kind of purple. I'm just gonna do that, put that in, and then I think we'll be done. So, 
And you can take your time, take your time, really. If you're a person that likes to paint like one square inch at a time, that's so fine as well. The process varies on who you are as a person, what you enjoy about painting. Just bringing all that into the process. I'm just gonna clean my brush. Grab another one, get some white on that. But it's not quite white. I'm just gonna use some of that brown that I have. Really just mark it in. Giving you a little surface texture realness. Like this is a coconut that's been through something. I don't know what it's been through, but I'm gonna let you see all of its scars all the little nicks and wicks about it. And it's really have fun. I think like the more information you see, like the more interesting the painting process comes to be, the more you give yourself time to really sit with it. Like it's not just any other, you know, apple or it's not just any other person it's 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 how this thing looks to you how you've seen it and then now you're giving us an opportunity to really like get to know you and the piece to it so we're just gonna do a little bit more like marks down there and then we're gonna call it that there's so much more information and this is such a loaded Coconut. I am in love with this coconut. I'm gonna take it home with me. So don't be afraid to really like go in and pull stuff out, and don't be afraid to give too much information. It's fine. I don't think that anyone will ever told you that, tell you that you did too much. But you see how I'm like pushing and pulling my colors. How I'm going in with light, and then I'm just like bringing some back to it. That's how you get texture. That's how you get volume. That's how you create these little moments and degrees of separation. I could do this all day, but I know that we have like a time limit. So please, if you have any questions, like I've said before, feel free to ask. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to end right here. So thank you guys. Oh, if you have these like little white spaces and stuff like that, just feel free to just bring them home. So I'm, uh, let me just bring them home right quickly. Just gonna go get that. Do that in. Thank you all for your time. Thank you for your patience. I think that we had a lovely week together. Like I said before, my name is Jody Minnis, and it has been a pleasure to be in your company. So I'm just caressing this right now. I know that I'm not doing a lot of looking, but it's okay. Just wanted to clean that up. So have a beautiful day, guys. Thank you so much. And please, please, if you did any work, I want you to share it with us. Um, and yeah, so if you did any work, please feel free to reach out to the NAGB, share, share your process, share your pictures, the painting, anything that you did this week, we would love to see it. And here is our coconut. Thank you.